right, here we go. We're back with part two of the state's response to opposing a post-conviction relief for Stephen Avery, which was filed on November 23rd, 2022. And we're going to continue where we left off on page six. Avery failed to plead sufficient facts to meet any of the prongs of the Denny test. When a defendant seeks to present evidence that a third party committed the crime for which the defendant is being tried, the defendant must show a legitimate tendency that the third party committed the crime. In other words, the third party had motive, opportunity, and direct connection to the crime. A defendant's offer of proof on these three prongs is insufficient if it merely establishes a bare possibility that the third party could have been the perpetrator. Rather, it is the defendant's responsibility to show a legitimate tendency that alleged third party perpetrator committed the crime which I mean clearly I'm not a lawyer I got my degree from Netflix clearly that's what Kathleen Zellner did in her last filing whether Swinsky's testimony and the other allegations Avery presented actually allow him to meet the prongs of the Denny is a threshold question if it does not Avery cannot meet his burden on either his newly discovered evidence claim or his Brady claim and as explained below, Avery has not pled sufficient facts to meet the Denny test and thus no hearing is necessary on those new claims. Motive refers to a person's reason for doing something. Avery claims that he established that Bobby Dassey had the motive to kill the victim because pornography and some gory images were found on the communal computer in Dassey's home which it was but Avery but what Avery presents is on the whole a misrepresentation of the facts and those assertions that are minimally consistent with the record consist of tenuous conjecture only he fails far short of presenting facts that would establish that Bobby Dassey is the person who accessed the pornography and other images let alone that anything found on the Dassey computer plausibly establishes that Bobby or anyone else had a motive for Teresa Hallbach's murder the facts of record show that these computer searches are neither relevant to establish anyone, including Bobby, had a motive for murder in October 2005. First, Avery has once again failed to supply sufficient facts to prove that Bobby conducted any of these searches. As the court appeals noted previously in the case, the mere fact that Bobby could have been at home when some of these searches were conducted fails to establish anything about who actually conducted them. And Avery cannot rely on his computer experts or anyone else's speculation on what Bobby's schedule might have been on those days. That's, that's ridiculous. But speculation based on the timestamps from a fraction of the searches is once again all Avery has provided with no citations to any actual facts of record about Bobby's whereabouts at those times nor anyone else's nor anyone else's who may have had access to the home as the court of appeals previously observed the existence of the searches is not fact that would establish Bobby was even in the house at those times let alone that he was the person using the computer accessing these images Furthermore, Avery has failed to support his allegations to establish anything related to Bobby Dassey or even to a crime. There are no timestamps given for the searches Avery points to in the report and no explanation of how any of them are relevant to an individual's motive for murder. Most of them are generic and mundane and the mere fact that someone searched for these things doesn't show anything similar or related to this crime. Additionally, Avery's own submitted exhibit shows that the bulk of the searches for pornography or gory material that he relies upon for this allegation of motive had no similarity to this crime and either 
occurred on a weekend when anyone there could have accessed the computer and occurred after 3.45 p.m. on a weekday when Blaine indisputably also had access to it. They're talking about Blaine Dassey, of course. Nor did Avery account for the fact that the Mishat School District had spring break from March 24th, 2005 to March 30th, 2005, meaning Blaine and Brendan and anyone they invited over could have been in the home on the weekdays during the time from April 7th, 2006 to April 18th, 2006, meaning Blaine at least also had access during those times. Indeed, of the 128 searches listed, only 28 of them occurred between 7 a.m. and 3.45 p.m. on a weekday. And of those 28 searches, only three of them occurred before Teresa Hallbach's murder, two at 8.14 a.m. on Tuesday, September 13th, 2005, and one at 7.45 a.m. on Thursday, September 15th, 2005. Avery fails to explain how Bobby Dassey's only possibility having searched for pornography on a mere three times before Teresa Hallbach's murder is sufficient to show he was a violent pornography consumer on October 31st, 2005, who was then motivated to abduct and kill a stranger that day because of it. Avery is attempting to rely on very widely from the obscene to the mundane with no relation how to Teresa Hallbach's murder occurred. Indeed, Avery fails to point to a single image or search for someone who was shot and the body burned, nor anything that would suggest that those widely varying types of pornography had any similarity whatsoever to Teresa Hallbach's murder and has included such irrelevant and off-point searches such as MySpace, tires, race cars, race car accidents, Ford Focus accident, deceased girls. The vast majority of the material on which Avery relies and actually provides some timestamp for has no similarity or even relation to how Teresa Hallbach's murder occurred. And it was not searched until four months after the murder. Avery fails to explain how motive to fulfill a violent porn-fueled sexual fantasy can be formed or proven by someone not viewing any of this material until months after the murder already occurred. Actually shows that Avery has not met his pleading burden because a comparison to it shows why these computer contents would not be admissible as other acts evidence to prove motive if Bobby were the defendant. Other acts evidence is admissible if it meets the familiar three-part test from requiring it to be offered for permissible purpose relevance that the probative value of the evidence is outweighed by unfair prejudice. The latter two prongs are not met. Motive is permissible purpose for, introdu for introducing other acts evidence. But as explained, none of what Avery has presented is relevant to show motive to commit this specific crime. The Court of Appeals already determined that Avery's contention that these images are similar to the violent murder of Teresa Hallbach are false. Unidentified person searching a communal computer for various types of pornography and pictures of race car accidents or drowning victims month at, months after Teresa Hallbach's murder occurred shows an interest in anything similar to this crime, nor makes it any more or less likely that Bobby Dassey had a motive to shoot and kill Teresa Hallbach in October 2005. The computer contents are simply not relevant. These searches and images would also be excluded because without some closer tie to the events of October 31st, 2005, their prejudice value would greatly outweigh whatever minimal relevance they might have they might have and influence the jury to convict because they believed 
whomever conducted the distasteful, finally they talked about how disgusting these searches are, distasteful searches must be a bad person. Finally, apart from the lack of evidentiary support, Avery's theory that this pornography accessed months later in 2006 shows that Bobby Dassey had motive to murder a stranger within minutes of meeting her in October 2005 ignores basic human experience. Despite Avery's inadmissible police procedure expert's opinion, it is no surprise to find pornography and gore accessed on a communal computer to at least four teenage boys. That's disgusting. Not to mention anyone else permitted in the Dassey home. But viewing pornography or searching for race car accidents does not create a, a motivated murderer. Even if Avery could show that Bobby was the one who performed those searches or accessed these images, which again, he has provided no facts to support, he provides nothing establishing that viewing these images would give someone a motive for this murder and certainly nothing establishing that Bobby Dassey specifically had a motive in October 2005. Avery did not plead sufficient facts to establish Bobby's motive. All right, I'm going to end part two right there and I'll be back shortly with part three, which will be starting on page 15 of the state's response opposing a motion for post-conviction relief to Stephen Avery. Let me know what you think, leave some comments below, and if you're seeing this, part three is uploading right now.